Hello everybody, my name is Abdurrahman Hamad Al Abdul Wahab. I am from Saudi Arabia working at King Fahad University Hospital. Today I have a short topic or short talk about the multiple dural AV fistula embolization with the three different methods. 71 years old male complaining of slurred motion, vague visual disturbance, and tinnitus. So we started about the unenhanced scan of the brain and there is no abnormality seen. CT angiogram was performed. Multiple delicated vascular tortuosity at the right occipital and the anterior temporal loop. Some of these fissures is attached to the trochula and the posterior sagittal sinus, superior sagittal sinuses. In the susceptibility weighted image, demonstrate increased venous congestion at the right occipital temporal region with a multiple multifocal blooming artifact at the right parieto occipital region, demonstrate intracranial hemorrhage. And we started right external carotid artery gram, and the two, and demonstrate here as we see two dural AV fistula. The most important one is lateral dural AV fistula, which is feeding from the transosseous branch of the occipital artery. And they have the cortical branches reflux, cortical vein reflux are noted. Another dural AV fistula located at the posterior condylar vein at the level of the skull base, which supply by the proximal occipital artery branches and the ascending pharyngeal artery branches and the drainage through the suboccipital paravertebral venous plexus. So this is the 3D reconstruction image to administrate two dural AV fistula at the lateral sinus and the posterior condylar vein. This is magnification view of the posterior condylar vein which demonstrate the fistula point. So after that we went to the left external carotid artery gram demonstrate uh, there is a feature from the transosseous branch of the left occipital artery which uh, drainage to the trochular region and the posterior superior sagittal sinus. Actually, the transosseous branch feeder is bilateral, but it's more prominent in the left side, which is demonstrated in the 3D reconstruction image. So the right ICA gram was performed and demonstrate the venous congestion along the temporal and the occipital region and the interruption of the posterior superior sagittal sinus and the prominent of the inferior uh, sagittal sinus as a compensatory method. So 3D fusion of the right and the left external carotid artery gram demonstrated three type of the three location of the fistula, the lateral sinus, posterior condylar vein, and the trochula dural AV fistula. So the multiple complex cranial dural AV fistula. We performed single session embolization. As we say there is a three location of the dural AV fistula, right lateral sinus dural AV fistula torcula dural AV fistula and the right condylar confluence dural AV fistula. Dural AV fistula is abnormal connection between the artery and the venous and they have abnormal arteriovenous shunt that develop from the dura matter. So usually happen at the wall of the dural sinus and can be asymptomatic for many years. Intradural cranial AV fistula is very common. It can be account up to 15% of the all intracranial AV shunt. However, multiple dural AV fistula at the separate site, as in our cases, is relatively rare. It account up to 7%. So, 
intracranial dural AV fistula with retrograde cortical venous drainage are aggressively lesion presented with intracranial hemorrhage and the hypertension intracranial hypertension like in our case however other manifestation like seizure progressive neurological deficit and dementia can be occur and we should treat it first endovascular treatment is generally is the first line of treatment of the dural IV fistula complete understanding the fistula and your architecture is required so the procedure plan our procedural plan is transarterial onyx embolization of the right lateral sinus dural IV fistula because associated with a cortical venous reflex and is symptomatic symptomatic and should be treated first transvenous coil embolization of the right posterior condylar vein dural IV fistula and the transarterial particle embolization of the trochlear dural IV fistula so we are winding through the middle meningeal artery of the right side and inject onyx embolization as we see here in the fluoroscopic continuous injection of the onyx was performed and the complete obliteration of the fistula this is the final run demonstrate complete obliteration of the lateral sinus dural AV fistula so follow up CT scan demonstrate the site of the onyx injection Transarterial onyx embolization should be the first option of the dural AV fistula treatment in all locations except the cavernous dural AV fistula. Recent report that emphasize high cure uh, rate in single session with a minimal complication and the low rate of recurrence and follow-up. Onyx have unique physical properties which facilitated prolonged injection that can better control and the more predictable penetration. We use the reflex hard re-inject technique what have high predictable and through penetration especially in the microfistula along the wall of the sinus which supplied by multiple feeders like in our case. So we are choosing a middle meningeal artery approach in the lateral sinus dural AV fistula because the middle meningeal artery is straight and the fix between the dura and they commonly use as the mean to access lateral sinus dural AV fistula because they allow unlimited onyx casting. Even if the branch of the middle meningeal artery not is the main feeders, the middle meningeal artery allow the long reflex and thus represent safest route to access lateral sinus dural AV fistula. They have the caution should be exercised during transarterial embolization through the middle meningeal artery because the embolization of the petrous branch of the middle meningeal artery carries a risk of the facial nerve pulsing. There is another route through the transosseous occipital artery but it's a tortuous in nature and the extracranial portion and difficult to access. After that we are renting to the transvenous coil embolization of the right posterior condylar vein dural IV fistula. We use triaxial technique. Due to the nature of the vascular, uh, vascular tortuosity of the paravertebral venous plexus and the finally we get uh, the end and detach the coil at the fistula part as we see here. Complete occlusion of the posterior condylar vein AV fistula was achieved and this is run from the arterial size to administrate completely obliteration of the dural AV fistula. So transvenous coil embolization of the posterior condylar vein dural AV fistula, we are used detachable coil because it's considered safe than transarterial liquid embolic agent, which may cause sinus thrombosis or cranial nerve palsy in the skull base. So the coiling through the transvenous route are now regularly used for curative uh, purpose. The studies reported the useful complete occlusion can be up to the 100% of the cases. We can use aggressive onyx transvenous embolization but can be produced symptomatic cardiac and the pulmonary embolism and may have propagated the onyx plug to the proximal vein in the brain and we should avoid it. So I review article about the endovascular treatment of the dural AV fistula of the anterior and posterior condylar vein and the concern about the posterior condylar vein. There is a three case report about that. Two of them use uh, about transvenous embolization and is completely cured. And the one patient present with the interventricular hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage and the drainage phase was single medullary bridging vein. It's difficult to use transvenous embolization. They are used transarterial embolization and completely cured. So the last thing is transarterial particle embolization of the torcular dural AV fistula. 
the main features uh, was where it was uh, transosseous occipital artery on the left side and the right side, but it's more common on the left side. This is pre-embolization, this post-embolization, and completely occlusion. So transarterial particle embolization of the trochlear dural AV fistula. BVA particle is used to reduce the shunt flow. However, permanent cure is difficult to achieve in this method alone. So the embolization of the BVA using BVA is usually not recommended as a sole therapy for aggressive lesion and has a role of the urgent relief of the symptoms. So take home message. I have three points. Transarterial onyx embolization has become the main treatment of the intradural AV fistula except the cavernous dural AV fistula and it's associated with high safety and the efficacy compared to other. Endovascular venous embolization of the condylar vein dural AV fistula is the treatment of the choice and the careful analysis of the angioarchitecture of the fistula is important to know what the strategy of the treatment you can choose. So thank you for listening.